fellow high school trumpet players in the state of Texas. Uh, we are about to have the Jazz All-State Music published in a few days from now. And I wanted to put my first tip of the day out there before the music comes out because of some infamous, rather infamous emails that I had gotten many years back but I think they still apply to today. So, what was the one email that stood out the most was one year I think it's about six, seven years ago, maybe longer. Uh, I put out a a video, and since I'm the one that wrote the Allstate music, I think it was probably less than a week before, between the time when the music was uh, released and the time that my video was out, and. Someone, one of the students got on there and says, oh, I'm so happy that I learned this music before you posted your video. And I'm thinking, you learned the Allstate music in a week without listening to how it goes first. And that's there's a big, big problem with that if you want to be competitive. And I understand. I understand that there are people that don't believe that this is how it should be. I had teachers like that. They called what I, the way I teach, they call it spoon feeding. And if that's all I taught, they would be right. Okay? I call it competition. Okay, now what do, what do we mean by spoon feeding? You listen to the music, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it. Then the rhythms are almost automatic. Uh, one of the most important things is that when you make a mistake, you know immediately. And we're going to come back to that in a second. Uh, everything about the music that you learn is from imitating what you heard in the recording. And if that's all you ever do, yeah, maybe that's a bad thing. Maybe. Uh, what's the alternative? Like this other student, uh, figure it out on your own. Figure out how it goes. And, and we, yes, we need that skill. We need the ability to, to read well enough that even stylistically and everything, all, the, the total package, we've never seen the music before. We need that ability to play it like a pro the very first time. And you don't get that by being spoon-fed your music. So what is the contradiction here? Obviously, there's a contradiction. And this reminds me of a story. I like to tell this story. And if you go, if, if you've already heard it, just fast forward. Um, I used to do all the repairs on my car. It's part of how I was able to make a living. <laughs> it's by living cheap. And when stuff broke down on my car, I would go fix it. And there was a time when I needed a hydraulic hose. And I walked to the closest part store at the time, which was Pet Boys. I don't like Pep Boys, but if it's the closest one and you're walking. Um, and I think it was about two and a half miles away. And I get there, and you know, I'm not, I was never the best auto repair guy in the world. So I didn't know there were two different types of, of two different sizes of a, a hydraulic hose. So I guessed. Took me a long time to walk there. 
Took me a long time to walk back. I get back home and it's the wrong size hose. I have to walk back and buy the right size hose. And on that second walk, I'm thinking to myself, why didn't I buy both? The part was like a dollar fifty or something like that. And it's one of those uh, moments of learning wisdom that I apply to my life all the time now. Why not do both? You know what? You want a, a, a more musical example? People are always arguing about the right way to do pedal tones. Do them with all three fingers or when you when you get back when you get down to B flat and play open, uh, you know, I call that the easiest fingerings. Or should it be the fingerings that match the octave above? Why don't you do both? Who says it has to be either or? The, the exercises are entirely different. They're entirely different exercises. Who says you have to pick one or the other? Now let's bring it back to what we're talking about. Should you learn by mimicking the, the recordings that you can get your hands on? Or should you learn to figure it out on your own? There's the question again. Why don't we do both? It should be both. You should learn by listening to other people and and uh, mimicking what they do in your performance. You should do that. But you should also learn how to figure it out on your own. And if you've got a good teacher, he or she will help you figure out which one to use. And my advice for you with this all state music coming up, if you want to be competitive, the all state music should always be learned by listening first. It should always be learned by listening first. You are going to always be at your best when you know what the music sounds like. So why anybody would say, oh, I'm so happy I learned this music before I learned what it sounded like. I learned how to play this music before I knew what style it was in. I learned how to play this music before I learned, um, you know, uh, the, what the intonation sounds like. Stuff like that, the style, intonation, phrasing, um, time, feel, all of that stuff is stuff that you can immediately envision for yourself once you hear what it sounds like, right? So, so yeah, that's why I make the recordings and I, and I put everything else in my life on hold. I did skip a couple of years that I, I ended up doing them a month later or something you know, like that. But for the most part, I publish my recordings as soon as possible so that the eager beavers can listen first. That's why I do it that way, so that you can listen now before you jump in there. Now, I'm not telling you, you know, it's not my place to say, you know, how, if you're not my student, it's not my place to say what to do, what not to do. That is actually up to you. Uh, my advice, though, learn to hear the music before you learn how to play the notes. Okay. Now, I said I was going to come back to that again. There was a study, and I believe it's been uh, replicated many times, uh, where they put pianists in practice rooms. They were all equal skilled pianists and playing all the same piece of music, practicing the same piece of music. They had cameras in the practice rooms and they observed these students practicing. And then based on 
how well they played the music in the test afterwards. They came up with some conclusions about best practices for practicing. And what they discovered was that those students who figured out or, or could tell what their mistakes were the soonest were the ones who played the best. And I'm going to say that again. Those students who were aware of their mistakes soonest were the ones who played best. And that makes sense, doesn't it? If you, if you, if you realize immediately that you just played it wrong, you won't keep playing it right. I mean, you won't keep playing it wrong. You will try to play it right. Now, there's other aspects of that, I think, that are also important that we won't talk about here. The main thing we're talking about is how do you become one of those students that knows immediately that you played it wrong? How do you do that? That's the main reason why we listen. If the music you were listening to, if the the recording you listened to was accurate and you played it improperly after 10 times, 20 times listening to the recording, you're going to know instantly that you played it improperly. The only way that could not be true is if, well, two ways. Either you weren't paying attention when you were practicing and didn't realize that this sounded so much different from what you heard in the recording, or you weren't paying attention when you were listening. <laughs> okay, you actually have to hear what you're listening to, right? All right, so yes, do the listening first. And, 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 as a side note, there's no benefit to learning it as quick as possible. There is no benefit. You know, this idea is a myth that you can learn the music and fix the mistakes. I think a lot of the, the people who learn the music quickly, I think the concept they have is they'll learn the music quickly and spend the extra time they think they have Fixing the mistakes doesn't work that way. Mistakes tend to be pretty stubborn. Especially if you did them over and over and over again, not knowing they, that it was wrong. And I'll say it one more time. Mistakes tend to be pretty stubborn. Um, I used to say that they were permanent. Uh... I still kind of think that. I still kind of think that the mistake, the mistakes you make when you very first start practicing the song become permanent. But what do I mean by permanent? Well, I mean that the risk of playing it the way you practiced it, practiced it the first time, the risk of playing it that way is always present. I'm not gonna. I'm not saying that you'll play it that way forever now for the rest of your life? No. The risk of playing it that way is now present for the rest of your life. Okay? So, don't take that risk. Alright? Don't jump into it. There's two idioms that we use. Slow and steady wins the race. And the other one is look before you leap. Both of these are appropriate for when you first get your Allstate music. Okay? All right. Well, that's what I've got for you today. God bless you guys. Um, enjoy this process of learning the music. And we'll see you on the next video.